Hey, what's up guys? Elliot Hulse here on another Sunday, but obviously today I'm not at the gym. You won't see barbells behind me, but you might see boats, right? Because uh, I'm in Amsterdam. I'll be in Amsterdam this week. Colleen and I flew out here today. We just got here, so I might look a little jet lag, as I am. And uh, I'm also going to be speaking at a friend's event. And we are also doing a one-day grounding camp while I'm here. So the next few days we'll be exploring the city and then getting ready to meet some of you guys at the one-day grounding camp. But I figure while I'm still here, why not maintain my Sunday ritual by answering one of your questions. Now, uh, the question that comes to us is very timely, especially given that I am in the, in the city known as the most liberal city in the world. When we use that term liberal here in Amsterdam, it's a bit different than, you know, the political scene in the U.S. It really stands for liberty, freedom. Uh, Amsterdam is one of the first places to have uh, religious freedom or the, or the expression of religious freedom. Uh, it's also one of the places that had the first books printed. This place is known for its tolerance and, uh, and freedom. So we have a question today related to freedom of, in a way uh, as it relates to love. One of our friends, who uh, his question is inside this phone, but because I'm using the phone to make the video, you, uh, I can't read it. He has a question related to a relationship. He, he, he and his girlfriend were dating for a long time. He was very much in love. They were doing really well together. And he betrayed her. This is what he tells us. He says that uh, he was dishonest and she left him. And it has been heartbreaking. It has been hard. Over the past several months, he's been mending his broken heart. And it seems as if time has mended that wound. He's gone on to be a stronger version of himself. And now that he is a bit more mature and uh, he has moved on to a degree, he wants to know if he should try to get her back. And here's his plan. He wants to write a letter. He says, I'd, I'd like to write a letter to express my remorse and also share the love that I still have in my heart for her and share it with her. Now, our friend being on the journey of being a stronger version of himself is very objective. And I, and I commend you for recognizing that when you do share that letter, he says, when I do share that letter, I'm going to probably want to have her respond in a way that she may not respond, right? And that's always the case when dealing with other people, right? We may say something or, or share something or uh, divulge something, hoping that the other person will respond in a particular way, but we can't dictate how they're going to respond, right? By holding them up to a particular, uh, hoping them, hoping for them to respond in a particular way, or even oftentimes we hold them to a particular standard, we're putting that person into shackles of sorts. You know, we're, we're enslaving that person by our imagination, and that's not fair, and I know you know that's not fair. So, just like when you're dealing with your friends, right? A good example of this uh, hopefulness with regard to a response, we often see when we've got a joke that we want to tell, right? Or a friend comes to the crew, he's got a joke, something funny just happened, and he wants to tell everybody about it, and he gets everybody all ready for the, for the, for the response, for the laughter, and he tells a joke, and then there are crickets, and nobody laughs. Now, if our friend goes ahead and tries to explain himself he is just digging himself into a deeper ditch because he's not allowing the process to be natural, right? If you tell the joke and nobody laughs and you walk away but you still hold that giggle in your heart, well then that's normal and natural and you're completely detached from other people's responses. You're detached from the outcome. And if you attach to it and you try to make it happen, try to force it to happen, or try to get people to see your way, see through your lens, uh, when especially they don't spontaneously do it, then you further entangle yourself with all kinds of weird karma, right? You know, uh, it just gets old, it gets beat up, and it just turns into something uh, unresourceful. Not, not only is an explained joke not funny, it's kind of annoying. It's like, dude, all right, get out of here. So you can expect the same sort of situation when it comes to love, right? You can tell someone you love them and if you're setting yourself up 
for an imaginary response that they're supposed to give, you're gonna find yourself backpedaling, you might find yourself trying to explain yourself, you might find yourself further entangling yourself in the situation, which, you know, if, if you're trying to heal the wound, that could potentially pour some salt into that wound, my friend. So here is an invitation from me. I thought it was a great idea for you to write that letter. You mentioned writing the letter in order to get all the burden off of your heart. I think that's great, man. Of course, I am all for full self-expression. I think it's not only going to relieve your mind, but it's also cathartic for the body, right? When we have heart, we use the term heartbreak very figuratively, but anybody who has any sense of sensation in their body will feel the sting in their chest when they have that heartbreak, right? The solar plexus tightens up and the heart literally feels like it was stabbed. Those of you guys who are sensitive, you feel emotion in your body, right? That's what emotion is, right? That's what feelings are. You feel it, right? Where do you, where do you have your feelings? Here, you don't conceptualize feeling. So there's going to be, there's going to be uh, the, the processing of feelings by getting it out, by writing it down on paper. I say you write the letter, but you write it for you. You write it 100% so that you can get what's in your heart uh, expressed. And it's very helpful to you. Now the other thing is, the other invitation, something I might share with you, I'd like to share with you, and it's completely up to you to decide to try it or not, is if you really want to put yourself to the test, right? I'm a strength coach, so I'm always about uh, testing your strength, testing your character. If you really want to go ahead and do that, right? And, uh, and you write that letter and you share it with her, but have complete detachment from the outcome, meaning I am sharing this with you because I am moved to share it with you, not because I need you or I need something from you or I'm gonna wait in, in, in anticipation, right? Like the friend waiting for the jokes, waiting for the laughs, but there's no laugh. You wait there for anticipation, you're setting yourself up. I'm sharing this with you because it is just an outpouring of my heart. And you remain detached, you remain unmoved and stoic. You allow the emotion to rise in your body, right? Because if she doesn't respond the way you want her to, you're going to feel something. Allow that emotion to rise in your body. Breathe into it, notice, right? If she responds in a way that's not, she drops everything, opens her arms, and comes running back to you, right? Oh, I love you, and tears coming down her face. She stands there and looks at you or, or calls you a name or something. You've got to practice. I invite you to practice breathing into the emotion that rises when that situation uh, occurs, right? You're going to feel a pain in your body. Breathe through the pain. Breathing through that physical pain. Breathing through emotional pain. Breathing through feelings allows it to be processed. We don't want to stuff it down, right? Because here's here's what's going. Here what could potentially happen. What could potentially happen is you go from being detached, right, to having disdain. And I don't want that to happen. I don't want that to be the case for you. I don't, a lot of people they act as if they're detached, but they're not really detached. They're actually disdainful. We call that sour grapes. Right? It's like you can't have the thing, so fuck it. So you start thinking she's, yeah, well, fuck that bitch, she's nasty anyway, right? You know, I see a lot of guys do that. Where it's very strange, it's like you love her and you're hoping for a particular response, but now that you're not getting the response that you want, sour fucking grapes, real immature. So recognize the difference between detachment, being with the emotion, breathing through it, allow it to process because through that experience, you're going to become a stronger version of yourself, right? And you know, contrast between that and disdain. Be very clear about that. Brother, and I wish you the best, man. Look, maybe she will drop everything and come running back to your arms, right? Maybe that happens, that would be wonderful, that'd be great. But if she doesn't, look at it as an experience, an opportunity for you to, to grow stronger. Look at it as an opportunity to become a stronger version of yourself. Hold her in high regard, hold yourself in a self-respecting place. Do not allow yourself to make her a slave to your imagination and do not got, get caught up with your own vain imagings. I will see you next time, maybe in Amsterdam again, or maybe back home, done.
So I also wanted to share this with you. If you notice my chest, normally I have on a pendant. It's actually iron. It's uh, tiger iron that I've been wearing for about a year and that I really like and love a lot. And uh, I had it about two, three hours ago here in Amsterdam and I lost it. I, uh, I, ha I must have dropped it somewhere. I have no idea, but I haven't had it for the past hour. And I share this with you, man, because I'm detached. It was expensive and I loved it. it. had lots of sentimental value to it, but it's gone, man. That means it doesn't belong to me anymore. When something leaves you, that means it's not yours anymore. And that's all it is. I love my iron just like you love your girl, but when it goes, knows that it ain't yours. Done.